You heard from her earlier, but we're going to bring Yvonne Myers back on stage to share just a little more insight and to introduce our closing speaker. Welcome back, Yvonne. Thank you, Ann, and thank you for letting us show our, our not so interesting video. We have so many videos about coming to work at Columbine and not so much about our care, but we thought we'd I always hear from people, I didn't know that was your building. I didn't know LeMay Avenue was yours. I didn't know you had a campus in Windsor. So we really wanted to highlight our Loveland, Windsor, and Port Collins campuses. I also hear from a lot of folks, man, your, va your van is all over town. Well, we have 14 vans, and so you're bound to see many of them around. We do about 140 trips a day, so we are very, very busy in that space. Columbine turned... 51 years old on October 1st, and we had planned a huge party last June to celebrate the 50th, and that just didn't happen, obviously. COVID kind of took that away from us. So this year, we're celebrating every one of our employees on their day, National Physical Therapy Day, National Nursing Day, National Housekeepers Day, or month. Some of those are a month long um, with a 50, um, celebrating 50 t-shirt, and then a big um, celebration of, of their role in our company on the back. So we're excited to be a sponsor. We love this event. We think it's a great time for healthcare to come together, share with the community and, and kind of pause for a moment um, since we're such a big part of the community and such a big economic driver and so pleased that the chamber helps us have this opportunity. So thank you. My next step is to, to introduce Galen Emanuel and I'm super excited to do it, super excited. I actually attended an event in Loveland, the City of Loveland Leadership Team Culture Event in 2018 where Galen spoke. And, I think I use my hands a lot to speak. There's a joke around here. If you tied my hands, I wouldn't be able to speak. Well, Galen Emanuel puts me to shame. He is the most animated, happiest, most positive person you'd ever know on the planet. And after I left that event, I signed up for his weekly um, culture drop um, uh I don't know, YouTube things that come out every Tuesday. So every Tuesday morning, my husband even knows not to interrupt me because there may be a two to seven minute video of Galen Emanuel inspiring me about how to lead teams, how to be a better team member. And I have shared his um, email link with a bunch of our um, new administrators and managers to, to have um, that inspiration as well. So I'm pleased to welcome Galen, his, our final speaker of this event, Mr. Galen Emanuel works with teams around the globe, including Microsoft, Safeway, and NASA, changing the way humans perform and impact each other at work. Along with his business background, Galen is a world-class improviser, and you'll see that part of him as well. He's performed and taught improv for many years and toured with the cast from Whose Line Is It Anyway? Galen Emanuel reframes the way teams and organizations establish a culture, communicate, and perform together in business. His unique content is full of actionable tools to improve team dynamics, communication, EK, EQ, and generate high-level performance and engagement. He is a highly sought-after international speaker and every Tuesday morning in my kitchen. Today, Galen will provide tools, mindsets, and takeaways for teams to increase change agility and skillfully lead and navigate through change. His activities and insights will show participants how to respond to change, and embrace in a way that allows them to thrive instead of feeling like they're treading water to survive. This session is for employees and leaders around how they can effectively move through change and show up to support their teams during times of change. Please help me welcome Mr. Galen Emanuel. Yay, uh, thank you so much, Yvonne. Um, and hello, everybody. Greetings, uh, friends. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share, kind of dive into some of these topics that we're going to cover today. And uh, yeah, about change and, you know, just what a time to be alive. This last year and a half has been crazy, continues to be crazy. There's just new and different interesting challenges and changes all the time. So, uh, yeah, great. And just to kind of give you an overview, a high level overview of our time together. Uh, first, we're going to be talking about sort of change agility, growth mindset, some tools and resources to use for you personally, as well as with your teams to move through change just more effectively, more efficiently. Um, second, I'm going to focus on some other kind of key aspects of team dynamics, like feedback and establishing culture that will help you kind of set the foundation for more cohesive, healthy teams. And I think, you know, when we talk about navigating change, a lot of it's kind of like setting the foundation 
for what it means to be part of our team. And I think that's, you know, uh, you know, to just massively boost engagement, performance, the ability to attract and retain talent, which uh, I know all of you are thinking of and aware of right now, because that's a huge deal. So uh, just some really, you know, hopefully very relevant, very kind of crucial conversations. And uh, I want this time to be, uh, you know, it's going to go pretty quickly. I want it to be pretty positive. I want to give you a ton of resources. And so with my session, as I go through, I'll be sharing different resources and showing them to you, but I'll be, they'll be all available to everybody. So we'll make sure that they get, you know, everybody will have a copy of everything that I'm talking about in your hands. A lot of these are like conversations to have with your team or a resource to follow, um, et cetera. So there's going to be a lot of stuff to take away. It's kind of a flood, but it's a diverse audience. Some of you are high level leadership teams. Uh, some of you aren't. And so there's a little kind of a little bit of everything. Uh, there's something for everybody here uh, in our time together. So uh, yeah, and there will be an opportunity along the way to sort of pull you. I'm going to be switching between sharing screens, sharing slides, uh, doing a, a mentee poll. So I also just anticipate because it's the virtual age that 5% of this is going to be pure chaos. Something will go wrong, sharing screens here to there. So um, a little bit of grace in that space for me uh, as I navigate having like 20 different windows open on my screen. Um and good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's it. There was, there is one thing that you'll need, um, which is a piece of paper and something to write on if that's possible. I will also, you don't need that right at this exact second. I'm just giving you a heads up. Um, at one point I'll give everyone like 10 or 15 seconds to go grab something if you don't have it close to you, but we are going to do one exercise that requires you to have a piece of paper and something to write with, um, that I'm going to guide you through. And I want to let you know now, so don't surprise you later on. Okay. So let's just go. We got a lot of ground to cover. Uh, and I know I'm going to move pretty quickly. Um, but I opted for covering more ground, giving more resources and more conversations than, uh, than less. Cause I just, I think there's so many valuable conversations to happen right now. So, uh, apologize for the pace I will go as, you know, uh, yeah. Anyways, there's just a lot. <laughs> um, so first of all, kind of topping when we talk about sort of like moving through change and navigating change, uh, breaking this into sort of two pieces. One is sort of like self-management and like tools for yourself to effectively sort of like move through change, to get unstuck through change, to kind of understand, you know, uh, what happens to us when, when we have times of great change and, and, you know, just the things that cause us to suffer the most when it comes to lots of change um, and kind of focusing, you know, first on sort of the idea of change agility um, and, talking about what that is, which is just basically change agility is the ability to embrace the reality of continuous change. I would see the opportunities for growth and improvement and change instead of seeing change sort of as a threat or a loss um, and just be able to sort of proactively adapt to change and move forward and quickly and sort of thrive in whatever reality that we have uh, surrounding us because that's sort of change is like, here's this new reality that we may or may not love. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, Change agility for teams and, you know, it requires also a growth mindset and, uh, you know, a mix of kind of mindset and action, but also resources and tools. And I think that's a really important thing is not just the mindset of like, okay, we can, you know, change is hard, but we can do it. But having tools and resources and something to lean on and use to have conversations to sort of move through the parts that are challenging for us, um, right, to make a plan, to evaluate where we are, et cetera. So, you know, and a growth mindset, sort of just to kind of cover that, um, you know, when it comes to change, like allows us to see change as a step in a whole journey um, and sort of keep perspective of the big picture. Uh, also to see change as something new, like right, the opportunity to learn something new, to gain new skills, gain wisdom uh, and benefit in ways that we can't ever see in the moment at the time, right? When we look back uh, and, you know, this year has certainly done that. I have, you know, switching to virtual, for example, is like something like, it's like a lot of forced innovation over this last year of like, well, how do we deliver service? is remotely how do we just how do we navigate this stuff and we're forced to, to do it um, and then we learn how to do it well which is like how can we how can we have remote workers effectively it's like well we figured that out we didn't want to but we did um, and so um, also you know growth mindset allows us also to kind of like not be blindsided or overwhelmed um, by our own emotions and I think a important part of moving through change or when we struggle with change is being able to identify what's happening for us, move through those things productively um, and just have a resilient spirit, right? It's like everything can change. We can lose everything and just have the mindset of if, if we lost everything, if everything changed, we would still be able to like rebuild, grow and be successful. We started at some point with nothing and we built whatever we have today. And it's like the sort of spirit that we can do that again is possible. And, you know, we're capable of that. Um, so, uh, and change agility, 
for teams and individually, I really do think that this is a skill, right? It's something that we can practice and, and hone and have a skill. And when we are really change agile as a team and have a growth mindset, it allows us to anticipate change, right? Just, we know that change is constant. And uh, so like we can embrace the reality of whatever changes that we're facing quickly and be ready for anything, um, respond more resiliently, be more innovative and creative around challenges that we face um, emotions and like negative narratives don't also control us or control teams in terms of like, oh, this sucks. This is the worst. Da, da, da. It's like, that's contagious. Um, and so when we have, when we're change agile, when we have a growth mindset, we sort of don't get locked into the rut of kind of like negative narratives and negative stories. Um, and, you know, we can just choose our attitudes and interpret things in a more positive light um, and also tolerate ambiguity, which I think has been a huge deal because, you know, when we still have to move forward and make decisions, even when we don't know the outcome of those decisions and we don't know what will change next and what thing will happen. Um, but being able to sort of tolerate ambiguity is important. Um, and just to be able to communicate more effectively, right? Around, put context around changes that help us and others on our team view it in a more positive light, in a productive way, and to feel like we're in it together, right? Teams that are change agile collectively, instead of every person for themselves and people struggling here and here and there, it's like, we feel like we belong to something, we have each other's backs, we're moving through this together. And I think that's, that's really important that we feel supported. Um, so, uh, and something just change in general. And the reason why I think it's important to have tools and conversations to be able to move through change well individually and as a team is because just of this concept of kind of emotional contagion, right? It's that like negativity and pessimism as well as positivity and optimism are very contagious. And, you know, we sort of adopt whatever we're surrounded with. And, um, you know, just that your, atti your attitude and your energy is, is swayed by other people. Right? If you go into work uh, or you have meetings and everybody is very pessimistic and everybody's negative and everyone's like, ah, da, da, you are more likely to sort of adopt that mentality and sort of like buy into those narratives and sort of contribute to those conversations. And, and flip side of that is if people around you are positive, feel like let's focus on what we can control. Let's make a plan. Let's move forward, right? Like this sucks, but we can get through it together. You're also more likely to sort of adopt that mindset and that language and, and show up that way. So I think it's, you know, the reason that it's important for teams and organizations to have meaningful conversations about change and what's happening and what they're going through is because just collectively, you know, that it's just contagious, right? The attitude, the energy, the feeling of like, we can get through this. We have resources, we have tools, we know what to do. So um, good. Uh, all right. So the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to kind of change agility and, and this stuff is, I think there's sort of three pieces, um, being like awareness is the first one and really important, I think for yourself to be able to aware of, to be aware of what challenges that you're having with change, right? What blocks do you have? What, what are you feeling? What are you going through at any moment? And I think that is a big part of just also emotional intelligence and growth mindset is just being able to identify like, what am I feeling and what's the root of that feeling? So, um, I'm going to start with just a first resource I'm going to share. Uh, I'll share my screen and, and then this is sort of like, these are generally the five main mental blocks. So when it comes to being resistant to change, uh, these are usually the things that come up the most for people. Um, uh, share my screen and hopefully everybody can see it. Uh, good. Um, so this is it. These five are usually the five most common reasons that people are reluctant or have challenge with change. And so the first one being learned helplessness, right? The feeling of, I don't have control. I'm sort of a victim of everything that's happening. So I give up trying. I'm just like, there's no use. I'm a victim. I feel helpless. Uh, the second one being projecting blame, uh, feeling like, you know, what's happening is somebody else's fault, um, right? That this is happening to me and these things going on. So why make any effort or take any ownership of my part in this when it's like, I didn't cause this and sort of like, it's somebody else's fault. So, uh, the third one being sort of overprotection. Uh, this one's common for me I think, uh, because I can't control something. Um, I feel a need to sort of control everything else with the things that I can control with like a lot of rigidity and micromanagement, um, which isn't necessarily a positive thing. Um, the next one being ambiguity intolerance. We talked about that, but just sort of uncertainty is a threat. And so feeling sometimes like uh, avoiding the feeling of not knowing or not being certain and being unwilling to make a decision or move forward until things are crystal clear and I know the answer. Um, and the five one, that, the fifth one is sort of like loss aversion, right? Which is I focus more on what I'm losing through change than what I might be gaining from it. So a lot of times when big changes happen, these are the places that our brains go to a lot of times when we have a hard time embracing change that like, there's sort of like our gut reaction is like, oh no, we're going to lose. It's going to be worse. Or it's somebody else's fault, right? Like the reasons that 
prevent us from being able to move forward effectively. So, and I think just as a personal reflection, just for like 20 seconds, thinking about these five and thinking about for yourself, a time of great change or where you are right now, reflecting on sort of like, which one of these comes up most often for you? Um, I would say uh, for me, sort of overprotection, I think I just get into that place of like, okay, here's what I can't control and, uh, and over rev on certain things. But um, I think it's good to reflect about this. This is one of the resources I'm going to send out. I think it's just a useful conversation um, or for feeling like a big change happens and we want to be kind of evaluate what is going on for me right now. Usually if we're struggling, it falls into sort of like one of these categories. Um, great. Okay. Pretty simple. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen on that. And um, yeah, good. So you know, I think that when we, when we can identify what's happening for us, it allows us to take more control of our thoughts. And I think that's a reason for us to like have this awareness piece is because it allows us to sort of like take action, right? When we realize like, oh, I'm just experiencing sort of like loss aversion. I'm afraid of what we're going to lose or I'm focusing on that, which is preventing me from being able to embrace and move forward in this new reality. It allows me to sort of have control over my thoughts and not let that feeling that I maybe am not aware of, um, sort of impact my ability to move forward. Right. And it helps me kind of like make a plan uh, and move forward and sort of be like, this is what's happening for me. So right. For loss of aversion, it's like, well, let me sit down and think about 10 ways or five ways that this might benefit me that I'm not seeing right now. Um, and right. Just again, refocus on shifting our perspective. So good. The next, the next thing I want to share and talk about is something called the change curve. Uh, this is really, really common when it comes to just talking about, you know, theory of change and what people go through. Um, I'm going to kind of breeze through this really quickly. Some of you may have seen this before. I'm also going to share this resource. It's great to have as a guide, a conversation. Um, and here we go. Sharing the screen. This is the change curve. Um, and so it basically kind of outlines, you know, commonly kind of like in change theory, sort of what what emotions we naturally experience during change. It's really commonly kind of like we start on the left side, we have something happen, you know, shock, denial, fear, hurt, anger, frustration, confusion, stress. Um, and the, the circle that you notice that there's like a dip in the line is that generally when we're at the lowest point of this, also it is kind of like in line with our productivity. So as personally, as a team, you know, when we get into anger, frustration, confusion, stress, grief, we're like usually the least productive because those emotions are just, they can be so overwhelming. Um, and I think those are also the hardest to kind of define when we're feeling any of those things. It's hard to sort of pinpoint what am I feeling right now? Why do I feel so stuck? Um, and uh, you know, it's important to know about this, that like this process is not linear, right? We, one day we might feel, you know, anger, frustrated, confused, et cetera. And then the next day we might feel like hope or acceptance or creativity or impatience of like, okay, cool. I'm ready for like something new. And it's just, it's not a linear space. And I think it's important for us to remember, it's not a linear space for anyone else on your team, um, which is why it's important for teams to have conversations because people might be, you know, not might be, are definitely feeling different things at different times. Uh, and I think it helps us to be more cohesive if we understand where are each of us feeling uh, because it, everyone moves through this at different times, you know, uh, and, and stays at certain places and, you know, for us for different lengths of time. So again, it's just really healthy conversations allow us to sort of take a look at what am I feeling, right? I might be feeling things at the same time. I might feel frustrated and confused. Also, I might feel excited and creative. Um, and it's just, it's not a linear sort of like uh, thing for us. But important to understand kind of like these are, this is what we go through, right? Um, and like when we have the different sort of times of this, it impacts our performance, it impacts our mindset, um, right? When we're in sort of like loss, the shock, denial, fear, hurt kind of feel, it's, you know, uh, we just sometimes the fear of the unknown or becoming, you know, just feeling threatened by change. Uh, right. We say things like, uh, I prefer the old way. I'm anxious about what's to come. I'm, I'm angry about what's happening. Uh, right. As we move into like the struggle part, you know, the frustration, confusion, stress, grief, I think that, you know, the lowest point we feel like just not productive and like just overcome with things like, you know, I don't know how to move forward. I feel overwhelmed. Um, right. Having a hard time concentrating, et cetera. Uh, as we move through like, past that, we get into like the learn bucket, um, of like acceptance, hope, creativity, um, which is like after the biggest kind of struggle, we sort of start to feel more optimistic and sort of have this feeling of like, okay, we feel empowered to play a role in our new reality and, and sort of like shaping our new normal and accepting sort of like the reality of what we're dealing with, um, and starting to get impatient to be like, okay, let's just get through this and move forward. 
Um, and the final sort of bucket on the top being thrive, right? Energy, enthusiasm, renewal, feeling like this is our new normal. I'm excited. We can, you know, let's make things happen. Let's like go uh, and help sort of like pull others through it. So um, again, just a, a, a useful conversation, a useful tool uh, for teams to sort of be aware of, know what's happening, have conversations about. So the next thing I want to talk about is sharing um, and this is another, one of the resources that I'm going to send out to you. It's basically some strategies for action that you can take um, to move through change more easily. It's great to use for yourself. So just to sort of check on these five or six things and go through the list and be like, you know, when we're feeling stuck or when we're feeling at our lowest point, um, these are great conversations to have individually or with a team in terms of just like, here are six strategies and action steps that we can take and questions we can ask ourselves to sort of be able to get unstuck and move through. So, uh, I'm going to cruise through these two. Um, and this is nice to have as a resource because, you know, there will be times when we feel great, other times when we feel stuck. And it's just nice to have these things to lean on, pull out when we're feeling stuck, um, right? And just sort of be like, okay, are we following these things as a checklist? And what are some action items that we can take? So uh, what I'm going to do, I will share my screen again on this one just to share and go through the resource um, so that you can see it. I'm not going to read it to you because nobody, uh, all of you uh, can read just fine. Don't need me to like read a slide, but I'll just, I'll sort of pop through the five seconds or six sections kind of quickly with you together. So you can see sort of what's there. Um, okay. So proactively moving through change. Here are the six, six kind of pieces. Number one, staying grounded in what you know, right? With uncertainty, it's tempting to create narratives and make assumptions. So it's good to reflect about what do we know is true for certain? What is the why? What are we unclear about? What do we need to ask? Um, and sort of like take a look at what can we influence? What is in and out of our control? And sort of stay focused on that. Uh, number two, processing your emotions. Um, the five blocks that we talked about and the change curve is really useful for this. Um, it's really important for us to be able to identify what is happening for me? Why am I struggling? What emotions am I feeling? It doesn't mean that we try to make them go away, right? It's okay to like accept them. And something I like about this one, we just talk about emotions is that your emotions are the weather. They're not the sky. Um, and it's important to know that no matter what we're feeling, no matter how low or how high based on what's going on around us, those things aren't permanent. Emotions aren't permanent. Feelings aren't permanent. So it's okay to sort of process things, to feel them, to be like, I am feeling grief. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling, you know, whatever it is. And just like allow that for yourself. Um, but to identify it is like a really healthy part of that. So um, again, to process those. How are you, what are the most emotions are you feeling right now? How are you feeling about this change? What are you hopeful for? What are you fearful of? Um, how are you showing up, right? As a result of sort of like your emotions and how do you want to show up? This is a place where we can sort of focus on what we have control over, right? How I speak to other people or how, you know, my attitude about things, um, right? Those are things I can always control. Uh, number three, commit to self-care, really important. Mental health, physical health, uh, especially this last year, this has been a really, really, really critical conversation. So, you know, being intact mentally, physically, whatever that means for you, you know, exercising, meditating, cultivating gratitude, um, right? Practicing self-kindness is just as important as sort of having empathy for other people. And I think that's, you know, this is true for me for sure this last year, but like let yourself off the hook um, and sort of commit to self-care is important. Um, uh, next one being impacting others and practicing empathy. So again, this is like, a way that we move through and feel unstuck when we're feeling like change is to not feel isolated. And so connecting with other people, being empathetic towards other people, like builds connection, um, right. And sort of like respecting other people's journey through change. Somebody might be having a really, really tough time and I might not. Um, but it's important for me to have empathy for that person because there are times in life certainly where like I am having a really, really hard time and somebody else isn't. Um, and I think that like, that's how we sort of like build trust is how we show up for each other. Right. Um, and you have biases, judgments, viewpoints, but um, just extending grace and practicing empathy with other people is really important. Um, so I was like being really actively listening to other people, asking questions to understand people's perspectives, um, creating space, being aware of your own behavior and emotion, how you're showing up for yourself. Uh, important. Number five, maintaining connection. So kind of a connection to that, but like not to go dark, uh, right. To stay connected with your team, communicate with your team, uh, right. Create positive flow of energy for other people. Um, check in to make sure other people like, are you being supported? What, how can I help you? Uh, staying connected is really important when we have change. Uh, and the last one, just like keep moving forward. So, embracing change as a skill. Um, but it's like 
the ability to sort of take action, even though things are, you know, we have ambiguity, knowing that we're going to try things, they're not going to work. Um, and that's okay. Just like have that sort of like growth mindset, resilient kind of movement is like understanding, you know, some actions to take, what, what do we need to get done and what ground yourself, create a plan, focus on what you can control, figure out like how you can stay motivated and take breaks, um, celebrate wins, big, small, everything. So, um, just a handful of kind of tools here. And the last thing that goes along with these six steps is another resource I'm going to send out to everybody that I think is great. If you're just feeling stuck, it's kind of, um, it's called the action plan to get unstuck. And it is this, it's basically, uh, make a sheet. I'm sending this out as a PDF so you can just print it out. Um, here's like to create an action plan when you're feeling stuck is to just pull this out and do this Write down two or four things in each category. What do I have control over? What emotions am I feeling the most right now? How, how can I commit to self-care? What impact do I want to have on others? How will I maintain connection with my team? How will I move forward? These things can be helpful if we're feeling stuck to just take all the jumble and, and chaos and stuff in our brain, put it down on paper uh, and give us something kind of focus on and move forward. So, um, great. Another couple of resources, some conversation. I hope that some of these things are things that you haven't heard before. And I know that these resources are really, really valuable. Just again, like I said, for yourself, for teams to have conversations that are productive. Um, you know, it's just, it's so important uh, that we're connected and we have something, right? And I think a lot of times we kind of avoid having conversations with our team because everybody has experienced a lot of trauma. And so sometimes what we want to avoid is just starting a conversation where for 20 or 30 or 40 minutes, we're sort of complaining and being like just festering and like, oh man, all these things are terrible and terrible. So it's nice to have some direction, right? And so that we can dive into those conversations, but have them feel productive and result in what action can we take? What, you know, what, how, what can we do together to move forward as a team? Um, and so this next piece that I'm going to share with you is, uh, is a really, really, really fantastic exercise. And it, you, it's usable for a lot of different things. So this is where you're going to need a piece of paper. So if you don't have one of those, um, take five seconds or 10 seconds, go grab one, get something to write with. Um, yep. And you know, if you don't, if you don't have access to that, if you're somewhere, you can do this on your phone, just pull out the notes tab and like make notes underneath it. Um, what I'm going to do is go through this exercise together right now, individually as kind of a miniature version so that you can feel what it feels like. But I think the most effective use of this, this activity that we're about to do is to, is to happen with a team. I think to pull your team together, six people, eight people, 10 people, and just a giant whiteboard or, you know, on, on a zoom call, whatever it is, but like have input from everybody on the team and have this conversation. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'll explain to you uh, how it works. So um, the, what you're going to do with your piece of paper is you're going to make a grid, like line down the middle line, uh, you know, both middles this way, this way, make a, make four boxes on the page. I don't know how to describe that, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> make four boxes. Uh, and then um, at the top left side, you are going to write the words can't control, uh, can't control, cannot control. And on the right side, you're going to write can control. Um, so can't, cannot control on the left side, can control on the right side. Right now, normally we would like take some time for this, um, but we have a lot to get through. And I just want you to experience this exercise. Uh, I want you to write down, just take maybe 90 seconds, uh, 60 seconds, 90 seconds to write down things in both of these categories. So take a moment to just reflect on yourself of something that you're having struggle with dealing with something related to work, um, in your life. Just, this is for personal use for yourself, but I want you to just jot down in no order, both things in both categories. What are some things that you cannot control currently with what you're dealing with? Um, and what are the things that you can control and just jot down as many things in both categories as you possibly can. Uh, and I'll give everyone like a minute, uh, or so to do this. And, and like, literally the way I speak to other people, it's like, anything. Like what do you have control over and what things do you not have control over? The fact that there's a mask mandate, the fact that COVID exists, the fact that like, it's hard to hire right now, what, like whatever the things are, uh, you know, that you're experiencing, like as many things as you can, I'll be quiet and just let everyone make lists for about, like I said, about another 45, 50 seconds. Okay. That's good. Um, so and normally if we're doing this with the team, we can have this, we can let this be five minutes. So like everybody's just like add things, keep adding to the list, keep thinking. Um, so here's what I want you to do next. Um, and yeah, is now on the bottom. Oops. I'll write it here first so you can see it. Um, on the bottom left side and I'll hold this up so you can see it. 
in my very messy handwriting, I'm not a, I'm not a good handwriter. Uh, I want you to write the words I wish, and this is on the bottom left side. Uh, and leave this, leave this one blank. Don't write anything here, but on this one, you're going to write the words I wish. I wish. And now you're going to take 45 seconds or so, uh, 45 seconds to a minute. And I want you to write down, basically, if you had a magic wand, I want you to write down, if you could just grant some wishes, you say it is true, anything that you wish were or were not true right now about your situation, something you're struggling with, dealing with at work, change, whatever it is. I want you to just, you have a magic wand and you can say, I wish this, or I wish this were or were not true, whatever. You can just make anything happen in the universe around specifically around this or like change. I'm like, I wish I had $20 million, like, of course. Um, but specifically when it comes to kind of like this change or something that, you know, you're kind of like personally struggling with or going with um, just, I wish this were true. I wish this were not true. Again, it can be sort of like anything for you. Just a moment to reflect. I will be quiet and give you a moment to write just, just two or three things. You don't have to have write a huge list, but um, what are some things? And if you write five things, that's great power to you. I'll be quiet. You got 30, 40 seconds. All right. That's good. It's okay. If you only have a couple things. Um, now what you're going to do for the last square of the page right here is you're going to write at the top of this last square, my reality, my reality. Um, yeah, that's what you're going to write. And so in that box, what you're going to do right now is for everything that you wrote in the I wish category, let's say I wrote, um, I wish that my coworkers had a better attitude about change right? or just whatever it was. I wish people around me were less grumpy. Uh, what, what you're going to write on the, on the my reality side is for everything that you wrote on the I wish side, you're going to write a response to it. Um, and the reality side of like, what is actually true there instead? So if it was like, I wish COVID didn't exist, <laughs> um, right. Then on the, my reality side is going to be like, COVID does exist. Um, so yeah, whatever it is, whatever you wrote on the, I wish side, um, you're going to write a response to what is actually true, good, bad, or indifferent. What is the reality of that situation, um, across from, or in response to sort of like your, I wish statement, um, cool. Give everyone 30 seconds to do that. Okay. Um, that's good. You pause right there. So normally with teams, this is an opportunity for me to get some feedback and be like, how did that feel? What did you think of that? This is always the part where people are like depressed. Uh, <laughs> I hated that. It sucked. Um, and, uh, my response to that is good. Uh, and the reason for this is why. So I want to just kind of unpack what we're doing here. <sighs> when the, yeah, the purpose is not to make you feel depressed by the way, and like bum you out, but these things that you write down, what this allows us to do. Um, and when you look at the things that you wrote on your like, I wish list, these are the things, right. That are causing you or us collectively for doing this as a team, but you individually that you wrote down, these are the things that are causing you the most amount of hurt, frustration, resistance, right. It is what, uh, it's what you are battling the reality of, right? It is, this is basically, if you make this list and take five minutes and think about it, like these are the things that are causing you to suffer, um, right? Good, bad, or indifferent. And when we do this, what it allows us to do in a healthy way is to sort of acknowledge and grieve what it is that we're sort of like battling with and what is causing us stress and grief um, many times through change. And I think this has been true this whole last couple of years is that like we just bury things because we have to move forward with life. We have kids to take care of. We've got a job to do. We've got an organization to run. We have stuff to do. We can't pause and just be like, okay, all these things. And so what we end up doing when we're like, just go, 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 is we sort of I think it's very natural for us to kind of like just bury things and not take the time to acknowledge these are the things that are giving us the most amount of challenge and struggle that are unique to us. It's like, these are the things that are causing us the most amount of like hurt. Um, and when we do this, we name it. It allows us to put those things to rest, right? As we also fully embrace and acknowledge what is our reality, right? As it is good, bad, or indifferent, this is what is true. And this is the reality that we have to thrive within, right? This is what is true for us, whether we want it to be true or not. Um, and I think that doing this allows us to kind of take all the jumble and the things that we're maybe not necessarily processing or being aware of out of our brain onto paper to look at and say, this is what's causing me grief, but this is what's true for me. Um, and I think it just, it, it's, 
it, it allows us to stop sort of battling with that reality subconsciously, um, you know, and the things that are the source of our suffering and right. Desiring what isn't true keeps us in stress. And it sort of like weakens our ability to thrive and be successful and sort of like move forward. So the next phase of this, that's not the end of that exercise to be like, ah, I'm going to bum you out. Now you're done. Good job. Did you love that? Uh, the next sort of phase of this, and especially if we're having this conversation as a team is to now that we've had this reflection, taken a lot of time to write, here are the things that we can control. Here are the things that we can't here are all the things that we wish were true, or we wish were not true about our current situation. Here's what's actually true and real for us. Now we go back and take a look at the list that is under the can control that you wrote on your paper. Right. And if we're doing this as a team, it's like, great. These are the things that we can control. What are we going to do knowing that these are the things that we have power over, right? What it feels like to be here, how we treat each other, how we show up for one another, how we communicate, those types of things. Sometimes those are all that you have power over in a certain situation, but for you to focus on that, right? And align your brain and put your energy into those things instead of all the things that occupy our brain space and time that like are things that we can't do anything about. Um, so it allows us to be able to have this conversation as a team in a healthy way to be able to write, you're just allowing people to kind of empty their cup and be like, this is what sucks. This is what we can control. This is what we can't, but like, here's what's true for us. And then be like, great, we've done all this stuff. Let's take a look at that list. That is what we can control. And let's make a plan. Let's talk about moving forward. What can we do right now, this week, this month that we have control over? and make a plan and focus on those things. So I think this is a great way for us to have a conversation where we can sort of like healthily process and get things out and understand where people are on the team because different people are in different places on your team. Some people are really struggling. Some of them aren't, et cetera. Um, and then together as a team, cohesively focus on the things that you can control. Um, and I think this, this exercise is great in a number of different ways. It's great for yourself to sit down and reflect and do it just to yourself. It's great to have as a team for some part, productive conversation. This is also great to have with your kids, right? We have a teenager who's like really struggling or whatever. It's like, sit down, get a piece of paper, make a line, right? What are all the things you can control? What are all the things you can't, right? What do you wish were true? What's actually true? Um, it's just, it's a really good way to help somebody else that is a colleague, a friend, spouse, just a, right, a coworker, help them if they're struggling with something to have, here's an exercise. Let's just go through this thing together and just like, let's take the things that are in your brain, put them out on paper and sort of like see what's there um, and end in a place of like, here's what we can focus on. Let's make a plan around that. Let's focus on that. So um, just something I think is really positive and productive because sometimes we avoid those conversations because we think they will just sort of spiral into like us admiring our problems and not really knowing what to do. So, and I will send that out to you as well. That sort of resource that walks you through here's step one, here's step two, here's how to do it. But I wanted you to experience it right now to see how it feels before you go do it with your team. I think it's really valuable. So See, we're powering through and we got a lot more to cover. So um, I, yeah, I hope that's a, a useful thing for you. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to totally switch gears and go somewhere completely different. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Menti, uh, M-E-N-T-I.com. So bust out your phone. Everybody, where's my phone? I don't know where my phone is. Uh, I left it somewhere when I was getting water, but grab your phone uh, on your browser and go to menti.com. What I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen uh, and you're going to plug in a code on that screen. Um, so we can just do a little bit of collective conversation here. So uh, give everyone a moment together, but go to menti.com, open up your browser. It'll ask you to put in a code, put in the code 260506655. It's at the very top of the screen. It's also kind of along there at the bottom. Um, good. Okay. Um, I don't know how, but I've lost my phone. doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not important right now. Um, okay. So, and I'm going to go forward to the first slide just to see if people are in here. Uh, the question is, would you rather vacation at the beach or the mountains? Um, so if you are in Menti, you've put in the code. The code is still at the top of the screen, by the way, of 2650-6655. Um, should take you here. Uh, go ahead and put in your answer when you get in. And if anyone is having a tough time putting in the chat or whatever, like you need the code again or your stock or anything, feel free. But um, so far beach is oh, okay. We've got one for mountains. Everybody wants to go to the beach. Uh, you know, I'm a beach chooser as well. Uh, okay. Oh, right. 
Uh, sorry, I was just reminded and forgot about the delay. <laughs> I'm like, no one's in Venti yet, but there's a, there's a delay from here to there. So that makes way more sense. <laughs> I was like, are you guys struggling with technology? Uh, everything is good. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here we go. People are in there. We've got, um, yeah. Okay. Beach is winning 19 to nine, uh, 20 to nine. Okay. Good. You're good. So this is great. Just want to like get everybody in here. So I'm going to move to the next slide. Uh, some questions for you. Um, and just here's just also something I'm curious about, uh, which just I want to get gauge people's temperature here. How useful has the session been for you so far? Um, just in terms of those resources, talking about those change things. Uh, I would just, yeah, love to see this. Um, good. So the answers come in in real time. Uh, good. Okay. Love to see those high scores. Those scores are okay too. I just really, truly want to get a gauge of like, is this useful? Are these valuable things for you? Um, okay. Great. I like it. Uh, mostly good. Some good takeaways. Okay. So, um, great. Okay. We're moving into uh, the next piece, which I want to talk about. So, and what I want to talk about is the other piece. So those are really, really useful things for change, but the other two kind of topics that I want to talk about here are feedback uh, and also culture and establishing culture um, and the time that we have left because they're valuable. Um, and so what I'm going to do is with building a culture of feedback. Okay. So um, here's a couple questions that I have of you that I want to just get people's temperature on. So um, here we go. If you had to give tough feedback to someone on your team, uh, what one word describes how you feel about that? So you have to go and give tough feedback to somebody on your team today, right now. Um, yeah. What word describes how you would feel about having to deliver that feedback to them? Anxious. I'm waiting for the delay patiently. Uncomfortable, nervous, uh, afraid, necessary. Mm, I think probably a few anxious have come in. Bossy, clear, uh, awkward, hesitant, dreadful. Um, okay. Resignation. Oh, yeah. You quit before giving difficult feedback. Um, or they might resign. I'm not sure what that resignation means, but oh, like you'd have resignation. That's also a word. <laughs> Sorry. Got it. <laughs> that was lovely. Um, okay. Hesitant, awkward, thoughtful, uncomfortable, stress, anxious, nervous, intimidated, uh, awkward. Okay. Productive. Great. So um, we have the relationship with feedback that most people have, uh, which is okay, but man, it's really hurting your team. And probably you personally, uh, we're going to talk about this. So Totally what I expect, but yes, feedback is dicey for us. Okay, I'm going to the next slide. Um, now, think about being on the receiving end of some really tough feedback. What is one word that describes how you feel about that? So somebody is coming to give you very tough feedback that's hard to hear. Uh, what is a word that describes your feeling around that? Scared. Nervous. Embarrassed. Self-disappointment, less than, surprised, anxious, uh, defensive, hopeful, um, okay, bummed, um, okay, good, scared, defensive, embarrassed, disappointment, hopeful, less than, um, surprised, appreciative, yeah, so, you know, 5% positive things, uh, mostly it's like, Ugh! So, um, good attacked. Okay. Um, good. This is what I expect. This is for like what I see, um, guys collectively as a, as businesses, as humans, we are terrible at feedback and we have a really, really unhealthy relationship with feedback. Um, and like, I'm not calling you out, but this is what I see with every team and every organization, every industry in the universe is like similar answers. Uh, so, all right, here's the last question. How often do you go and seek that feedback from your team on how you're doing in their experience of you? This meaning like you personally, how often do you go to, whether you're a leader, do you ask your direct reports and they ask your team, or if you're a colleague, how often do you go specifically to your leader or your colleagues and ask them specifically for feedback about you and how you're doing in their experience of you? Never do it only when you have to try, but only make time uh, at least a few times a year, do it all the time. And like any answer is okay. Uh, I think 
you know, it's okay if you never do this. I think that's like the most common answer and like mostly true for people. <laughs> it's like, oh, only when I'm forced to. Um, and a lot of leaders don't do this ever, uh, which if that's the case, you're missing out on a very, very huge opportunity to build trust and rapport with your team, have better relationships. Um, okay, good, good, good. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, thank you. Love it. We're kind of across the board, but um, don't always make time. So we're like pretty good at it a few times a year. So we're, you know, we split the room on this one. All right, stopping sharing my screen. And uh, getting out of this, good. Just navigating multiple windows. Everything is great. You guys are doing great. Okay, uh, here's what I want to talk about when it comes to feedback. And I, um, I know I'm going to breeze through this and I have a resource to share with you that's really important. Um, but feedback in general is, we're talking about a time when retention matters performance matters, engagement matters, attracting talent matters, right? We're trying to hire people. We're trying to keep people and this matters. Feedback done well and skillfully inside an organization is like imperative to building trust, to accelerate growth, um, to holding people accountable. It's also a requirement for a healthy team environment. It is the fastest way to accelerate growth, um, right? To build better relationships. It, um, it reduces a lot of unnecessary conflict on teams um, because it, when it, it's done well, it allows us to address things in their infancy, uh, right? It's like, it is a quote that I love about this. Like it's easier to blow out a match than to put out a forest fire when we can address critical conversations and feedback conversations about performance, feedback, impact, you know, people's attitudes, et cetera, early on in the process when they're in their infancy uh, allows them to not escalate and grow into huge things. Um, it is absolutely the best opportunity and it's free. So in terms of organizations, leaders to build better, stronger relationships, have healthier, stronger, cohesive teams. It is like, it is a must that we change our relationship with feedback because for the most part, it's very unhealthy. And the way it's done is that it's just an opportunity for leaders to point out what employees are doing wrong. I mean, that's a broad generalization. I know that not all of you use feedback that way, but when I ask like, how do you feel about giving tough feedback? How do you feel about receiving tough feedback? Majority of the answers are like anxious, nervous, defensive, uh, you know, like scared, etc. cetera. Um, we don't have a healthy relationship with feedback. And um, I think as a leader and just in general, if you're not a leader now, like you will be at some point. And, and even if you're not in a leadership position, I think that like leadership is sort of how you show up. It's not really your title, but it's like to have a successful career and impact other people in a really positive way, like it is a must for you to have the skill to like give and receive feedback. Well, I think it's so critical. And right now, when we talk about retention and attracting talent, it's like, it is such a boost for us to know what we're doing well, to learn as an organization, as a leader, what do you need from me? How am I showing up as a leader? How, like, what would a 10 out of 10 look like for me? It's such an easy way for you to go to people and be like, guess what? I care about you and I care about your experience. And I'm going to prove it by asking and being willing to hear tough things that you don't want to tell me and then make changes about that so that right? So that I can grow and improve and also showing up and asking in service of our relationship and your experience for me. And as a leader or as an organization, your experience as an employee to empower your voice and say, Hey, guess what? It matters how you feel about working here. And like, and working for me under right on my team as a leader, right. Or me as a colleague and a coworker. So like, how am I doing? How can I do better? Right. It's like to adopt that again, it's growth mindset, which is very tied into sort of change agility that we talked about. Um, and it can cause a lot of anxiety. If we don't know how to do it right. What if I say the wrong thing? What if I damage this relationship? So what I'm going to do is share with you to build a culture of feedback on your team and organization. There's basically five tenants that are behaviors and mindsets that if you can share this, have this conversation, get your team to adopt these things, you are miles ahead. Um, and then I'm going to give you kind of a three simple model for like giving and receiving feedback that you can use, whether you're asking for feedback from someone else or giving feedback to them in a more skillful, direct way um, that will result in better answers and better feedback. So um, here we go, changing to that. Hopefully it will not be chaotic um, as I share my screen and find the tab that has that slide on it. Okay, here we go. Boom. Five tenets of a culture of feedback. These are critical. <sighs> Number one, and this, again, this is, these are mindsets, behaviors to adopt as a team, as an organization, right? And inside your, your team to be like, this is our relationship with feedback. Um, and number one is that like feedback is an opportunity, not a threat. It is not an, it's not just a way to point out what someone's doing wrong and criticize them. It's an opportunity to grow individually, to build better relationships, uh, right? To like, to be more 
exceptional as a team, as individuals, as a leader, et cetera. It is an opportunity. It's not a threat. Second one, all feedback comes from a place of care and support and investment in each other's success. We can't just, we're not critical observers to come in and just swoop out and point out what other people are doing wrong. It's like, if I'm giving feedback to you, it's because I want you to be successful. I'm giving you feedback saying, these are the things I think are getting in your way. Um, and this is right for your career in your role. These are the things that I think you have areas of opportunity to improve. But if, if we are receiving feedback from someone who we genuinely feel is interested in us and cares about us and wants us to be successful, we're a thousand times more receptive to hear it. So we have to deliver it that way. Um, Number three, feedback is giving is coaching, not criticism. Again, I want, I am your partner. I'm your coach. I'm a mentor. I want you to be successful. What do you need from me? How can I help you? Um, but I am a coach, right? I see this is like, you are attempting to get to the Olympics and have a great career and be successful. I am here to help you in that process and illuminate blind spots of things that you're not realizing about impact that you have performance or attitude or ways that you're showing up. Like I am a coach. I'm not a criticizer. I'm not a judge. Um, right? Uh, the fourth one being consistent growth requires consistent feedback. It's not often enough to have a once a year performance evaluation. We need to know where we stand along the way, right? And having feedback conversations that are quarterly, that are quick check-in, the three question model that I'm going to share with you is great to be like once every quarter, I'm going to sit down with every one of my direct reports, my colleague, my coworkers, and have these three simple question conversations. It's so imperative that we don't talk about things that we should have talked about six months or nine months ago, um, right? But feedback is timely. Um, and the last one, number five, this one makes people squirm, especially leaders who don't ask for feedback, but nobody's exempt. In a culture of feedback, every single person needs to be asking for and giving, receiving feedback from other people. Uh, if we have an environment where feedback just goes downhill, leaders give feedback to like employees. Uh, first of all, that's ridiculous because just because you have a higher title doesn't mean that you're flawless and immune from growth and immune from like having blind spots and, and impact that is not ideal and wanting to like learn about that. The other thing that is that leaders ask for feedback. What you do as a leader is that you model for your people that asking for feedback and is normal. It's healthy. It's a way to grow. It's a way to improve. It's a way to build better relationships. It's not an opportunity to look weak or be vulnerable or like, right. Or point out what's terrible about you. All of us have blind spots. All of us can improve. Leaders have to ask for feedback. If this isn't something that you do, like I, I implore you, you're missing out on a huge opportunity to build trust, build rapport, build better relationships, which ultimately results in higher retention, being able to attract better talent, right? And having you know, elevating employee experience by asking for feedback and caring. So I know I'm fired up about this, but like, man, that's true. So I'm going to share with you three simple questions. Uh, to have these conversations that is just a sort of model. And this also is a resource. I'm going to send this out that has these three questions. Um, it actually goes into more depth to give like a very step-by-step -step guide of how do you like step-by-step -step give feedback and how do you receive feedback? Well, um, we just don't have time to cover that today. So here are the three questions. Number one, what am I doing great? Or what are you doing great? Uh, really important to start with that and acknowledge success and progress, point out what is going well. It's just as valuable to reinforce good behavior as it is to sort of right to address areas of opportunity to improve. So number two, what are my biggest areas of opportunity to improve? Or what are your biggest areas of opportunity to improve? Really, really important. Um, this is again, a time to be very succinct, very direct, very honest. Don't beat around the bush. Very clearly say, this is what I'm seeing from you. Um, this is examples of that in practice. This is the impact that that has, um, right? And like, this needs to improve or like, this is an area of opportunity for you to improve. Um, that being said, being succinct and direct and honest is not, don't hide behind that as an, ex, as a, right, as a shield in order to like be cruel or mean, right? The most skillful element of giving feedback well is the other person feeling like you're invested in them. So like we're giving direct, honest feedback. That's true. If someone's job is at stake, if their job, if their performance or their attitude doesn't turn around, you have to tell them that you have to say those words out of your mouth. And I know, I know that's hard to do as a leader, but we follow it up with, I am your coach. I don't want that to be the case. What do you need from me? How can I support you? How can we get you to where you need to be, which needs to look like this, right? Again, we're coming from a place of coaching, not criticism. Uh, and the last one is really important. What would a 10 out of 10 look like from me? Or what would a 10 out of 10 look like from you? Um, I think this is really important and often missing from feedback conversations, but it's critical because the things that we just point out what's great, point out what needs to be improved, doesn't capture everything as part of the conversation. It's really valuable to say, an absolute exceptional 10 out of 10 as your leader, what would that look like from me to you? 
There's more information that we can mine from that person's experience and our impact of them. If we ask this question, um, it's a simple, simple question, but it's like, just tell me an outline for me. What is a 10 out of 10? Um, I think it's great. And also giving feedback to an employee, right? These are the same three questions that I use when I have my conversations with my team. This is what you're doing. Great. Point out all those things. This is your biggest areas of opportunity to improve. And this is what an absolute 10 out of 10 would look like from you. It's easier to hit a target. We know exactly what we're hitting at. Um, really, really valuable. So, okay. Uh, that's that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Hi, me again, everybody. Um, this is fun. Uh, good. So the last topic that I want to dive into, and I know we only have a handful of minutes. Um, and so what I'm going to be able to do is I'm not going to be able to go into a lot of detail here, but I have a resource for you that is like absolutely it's amazing when it comes to culture and reframing the way you think about and how you drive culture on your team. And when we talk about attracting talent, we talk about retaining talent. What do people care about? They, they don't necessarily care about your core values of trust and integrity and respect to that. They care about how they're treated. They care about what it feels like to work for your team. They care about how they're treated by the company. They care about how they're treated by their direct leader and supervisor. And they care about how they're like treated by their coworkers and the other people that show up. Um, and so, you know, Here's just a couple quick points I want to say. The way most organizations approach culture is that, uh, and first maybe like kind of starting with a definition of like, what is culture on teams? Because that's such a loaded sort of elusive topic. Culture is the way that people show up and treat other people on the team and approach their job. It is the rules of engagement that define what it means to be part of a team and how we behave together. So to develop and establish exceptional culture requires a really clearly defined set of behaviors and ground rules that everybody understands that is universally like people take accountability for it. They understand it and they take ownership for it and that nobody's exempt from. Um, and uh, yeah, so I also have, okay, I'm going to share my slides on this. Uh, as well, because I have just a couple of things to say. And I know we're very close to the end. I love you. We'll get there. Um, this is the define, defining culture. This is what it takes to have culture be exceptional. And the resource walks you through this. So the resource I'm going to share is a culture assessment. It is something you can have as a conversation with your leadership team to evaluate how clear is our culture, how committed to a culture that is established, are we? And how consistent is it? Um, and the three steps to make culture happen and like actually a tangible, livable culture that people can feel and experience every day that has a huge impact on performance, retention, like engagement, attracting talent. Do, can you imagine in your interview process as you're hiring people, if people are like, what's the culture like here? And you could clearly define it and say, we have this cultural DNA code. It's like this outline of behaviors and this is how we all show up. And this is like... From the CEO to every person, this is what we're 100% committed to. Like nothing takes place here that is out of alignment with this culture. And this is how we consistently integrate it into hiring, like firing, uh, right, onboarding process into culture, like feedback and performance evaluations, reward and recognition, like training and development programs are all based around this sort of core cultural DNA code that is a, that is a clearly defined set of behaviors that says this is what it means to be part of this team. Um, so... And, and what I'm talking about is taking the values that you have. Most organizations have right, a mission statement, a list of values, uh, a vision statement, but usually it's trust, integrity, respect, teamwork, excellence, fun, um, which is great. You don't have to throw those out, but that is a 1.0 version of culture that doesn't actually impact people on the ground. So the, the work to be taken is outlined in this culture assessment because it has the action steps of what to do. But basically we take those values and we, we unpack them into behaviors. So instead of excellence, we have uh, something that says we don't, right? We, we see feedback as an opportunity, not a threat. And we actively seek out feedback from other people and receive it with grace. That's a behavior. The value is excellence, but it's like, how do I live that? Right. And we're answering the question of like, how do you teach people how to be inside your organization? So um, I'll share that resource. It's lovely and wonderful. It's the heart of like a lot of the work that I do. If you have questions about any of the resources, you can also connect with me. Um, I'm happy to talk about these things uh, with all of you. So really quickly, we only have like a minute left. Uh, I'm going to share my screen again. Go back to the mentee thing. Oh, the mentee on your phone. Is that still open? Um, just quickly want to boom okay just quickly to get a little bit of feedback in general i know we covered a lot of ground but i'm curious to hear how useful was the session for you overall and it's okay to have low scores i won't feel bad i'm open to feedback always uh but 
it's nice to know kind of like, where did these things land for you? Um, I know there's a delay. Okay. I don't know if everybody's answered five so far, but that's the only thing I'm seeing. So it's great. Uh, and, um, okay. Ah, good. Ha. I have four out of five. Love it. Uh, good, good, good. Okay. Last one I'm going to pop on. You know, oh, I think people are just getting to this right now because of the delay. I just don't want to go over and take anyone else's time. I know it's also time for like a little bit of a break. So, um, do I have like 60 seconds left? Is that cool? I have like a minute. Okay, great. I don't want to rush. Um, Good. Okay. I love this. I hope that's earnest. I hope that there was a lot of really good stuff for you to think about those resources. Please have those conversations with the team. Please take those to heart um, and feel free to reach out to me to connect about implementing or using any of those. I would love that. So very last slide. would love to hear just like your biggest takeaway for you personally from the session. Um, it's always useful for me to kind of like know what stuck with people the most what stood out, what makes sense, what resonated, what's helpful. Um, it just helps me. And I think that there is feedback that's also going to happen after the fact, but it's just, it is, I am such a like champion of feedback. It's like, it's the best way to grow. It's the best way to improve and understand how we're Im Im impacting people. So um, culture action plan, coaching is not criticism, communication, actionable tools, love the change curve. Yes. Good. Um, good, good, good. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of, work and actions were like built into these resources too. So there's, there's plenty to dive into. And I, I really wanted that to be part of the session is something you can take back to have really meaningful conversations, to take really meaningful action together with your teams. Um, so put energy, what I can control, actually control some things. Need to focus on what, not what I can't control. Yep. Five mental blocks, culture strategies, moving through change, culture and feedback, the four squares, CCC, we statements, feeding the fish. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, ah, awesome. Yay, we're tired. I need to gather my team back together. Yes, good. Okay, good. I love it. These are great. Love to hear it. Um, I'm going to share one last thing really quickly, and then I'm out of here. This is a resource that is... Uh, um, <sighs> cool. Sorry. These other comments coming back in. I just love to see that. Change agility. How to help myself with teams. Coaching is that criticism. Cool. Okay. So last thing here. This is just something that's available to you. It's totally free. Um, Yvonne was mentioning this, but every Tuesday morning, I put out a video... It's five minutes long. Uh, and if you want, you can text the word drop to 44144 to sign up for it. Um, also, if you don't want to do that, because I know I'm allergic to mailing lists, uh, what you get if you sign up for that is one email every Tuesday morning with nothing in it but a video. There's no spammy. There's no paid version. There's no like buy this program and stuff for me. It's literally like just one video every week that is around culture, teams, emotional intelligence, giving, receiving feedback, navigating conflict. Like, all things like stopping gossip in the office. Like there's just all kinds of topics on there. Um, and also those are available on YouTube. So all those videos we put out on YouTube. So if you don't want to sign up for a mailing list, which I totally get, we have full inboxes. Um, you know, I post that on LinkedIn uh, and YouTube as well. So just, it's a free resource, great opportunity. Sometimes people are like, how do I manage this up? Or how do I bring this concepts to my manager, my boss, my leadership, if they're not on board with culture, I think that's a great way. It's like find a five minute video that talks about culture or something that you can like, Hey, I saw this conference. I saw this, here's this resource. Here's this video. Um, I think we should have this conversation. So, um, Hopefully you can use that for training conversations and just there's useful stuff out there. It's all totally free. Um, okay. That is it. I stopped sharing my screen um, and all the things. I love you all so much. Uh, thank you for being here and being patient. And uh, I hope that you took away a lot. Um, I'm going to stop talking, but thank you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, and hang in there. I know things are crazy. The Just everything is crazy right now. So um, hang in there. Keep being awesome to each other. All right. Signing off. Thank you so much, Galen. What a whirlwind and such powerful information and insights. Um, I, I texted for sure. So, so I'll, I'll be joining Yvonne in that uh, five-minute Monday opportunity. Uh, appreciate you sharing with us today. Again, as, as Galen mentioned several times, we will provide all of the resources that he outlined to you as our attendees. They'll live on our website at the chamber. They'll also live on the NOCO Health Sector Health Summit 
website. Uh, check it out. Um, that does it for us today. Uh, quite a whirlwind. We, we ended up having some amazing local insight into what's happening with our healthcare system. We had the opportunity to talk about talent and also learn about some of the exciting things the county is leading on alongside the health sector partnership. Uh, I really appreciated the dive into behavioral health, really understanding what's happening in our community, but as well, what solutions are coming our way. Our DEI conversation, wow. Um, Hopefully many of you get the chance to connect with Corey Wong, just a tremendous resource. And then Galen, uh, again, a fire hose of data and insights and guidance for all of us. Before we wrap up, we do want to do a very special thank you to all of our sponsors. Again, you've seen them rotating across our screen all day today, but a very special shout out to our gold sponsors. They included Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield, Columbine Health Systems, the Northern Colorado Health Sector Partnership, Old Town Media, and UC Health. We want to say a thank you to all of our speakers today. And uh, again, remind you that all the materials will be available on our event website. That's nocohealthcaresummit.com. Finally, we want to make sure you come back. We've got some amazing programming starting at 145, and that's for our NOCO Housing Now Summit that's being brought to us by Kaiser Permanente. Uh, A tremendous lineup of presenters and topics, and of course, a, a key talent issue that we're all facing, which is how do we create more housing for all kinds of people in our communities in order to make sure that people can live, work, and play in our communities. So um, you can get to that 145 conversation right here. So the link that you use to come on to the healthcare summit is the exact same link that you can use to jump on to the housing summit, or you can uh, keep the keep the music playing in the background while we take a break. Um, that's it. Thanks for joining us today. Have an amazing, amazing day. We look forward to seeing you this afternoon and uh, go out and do something great.